we had some really, really bad charges, man. And like, he came to the plant one day and he's in a Christian program, right? So I just asked, I was like, I was like, like how, how's your relationship with God? How everything's going? He was like, man, I want it, but I, I just don't think I can follow all those rules. I just can't see myself uh, following the rules. He's like, like, dude, the, the, the sex till marriage and the, He's like, I, I still curse, and I can't. I said, listen, I said, you're looking at this wrong. Like, that, it's, you don't look at a set of rules and be like, can I follow that? It's like, dude, no, you, you can't just in one day that happened. That's not even what God wants. It's like, hey, like, I, I, I want to try this thing out. I love you. And, like, you, you, your only job, like, so religion is a set of rules, but, like, the right way to do it is to have a relationship. Like my, I'm, I'm not religious, but I have a good relationship. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not gonna walk around and be like, oh, you're going to hell, you're going to hell. You need to stop doing this. I'm, I'm not gonna judge nobody. Yeah, this ain't the Westboro stuff. Baptist That's Church. The, uh, I, yeah, that, and you have a good point because there is a big difference between religion and faith. huge difference. Yep. Huge. huge. Like, like people miss that a lot. Oh yeah, That's it's it's a huge like people, they they get very very religious and it's like these rules and it's like nah bro what 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 do you really mean in your heart like my thing is is like I, i'll go i wake up early i go to the gym and then i spend i have a 30 minute drive to work and every day i take that drive in complete silence 30 minutes every morning in complete silence dealing with all my emotions and talking to god and saying god today i want to be the best husband i can be i want to be the best operations manager i can be I want to be the best man of God I can be. Because look, I'm a husband, I'm an operations manager, uh, I love football, all this stuff, but at the end of the day, what I, I'm a man of God above anything else. Like I'm a man of God who has a wife. I'm a man of God who's on a pa podcast right now. You feel me? Yeah. So like yeah. the biggest thing, it's not a set of rules. It's like, somebody told me this, my buddy David said this one time, God's not like, if you get in trouble and you mess up, it's like, dang, I messed up. Like, I can't tell my dad. I have to hide this from my dad. If that's the way you look at God, you have the wrong outlook. The, the, the right outlook is like, dang, I messed up. Like, I need to talk to my dad. See, I have a fear fear of God. That was good. Yeah, that was good. That was good. I, I have a fear. Was that good? Of, yeah, you know what I mean? That I have was a good. fear of God, but I don't have a fear. Of, I believe yeah. in a, I it's believe a, it's in a, a healthy fear of God. Yeah, I believe in a merciful God. I not like those Westboro Baptist Church people. Well, that are loony. Whenever you talk to him, he already knows what's on your heart. Yeah, he knows exactly yeah. what you want to say yeah, that, you, before like you I say it. He literally created you. This is the one person you can't BS. You can't You can't do it. You can't. He knows when you're trying. You know when you're trying. And he you can see everything you within you. too busy to where you're like, oh, I can't talk to him. He'll make time. So yeah. here's, here's <laughs> a, uh, something interesting. I got in a, a conversation with an atheist, actually. So their question was, well, you know, I asked them, what do you think, like, why are you, what made you decide to believe in, you know, more science kind of aspect of things? Well, a lot of times, believe it or not, a lot of atheists say, well, what's ever happened good in my life or where's there any proof? Now we have like, the, I believe in the Big Bang. I believe in evolution. I do. But my, what I tell them is, all right, can you prove everything that's in the universe can you tell me everything there is in the universe can you tell me that he said of course not exactly you can't explain everything that we believe in is faith-based right completely 100 percent faith-based people who are atheists and look i have a lot of friends my older sister's atheist they're just not they believe they don't have much faith in the eternal being mm-hmm now, I will tell you something that I have been reading a lot of books about different religions. All right. How crazy would it be if the Buddhist religion was true? Like whenever we die, we get, we're reincarnated into an animal. What kind of animal would you want to be? That's a good question, man. Man, that's a good question. A lion. A lion? Yeah. What about you, Tay? Oh, ba babe, can you answer a question and can you give me some lemonade too, please? <laughs> yes, come on. Oh, there's no more at all. Can you give me strawberry lemonade? Don't pull the don't pull the one, don't pull the one that uh. That I have a good wife. Here, babe. Thank you. <laughs> what animal did you say? 
Mika, oh, wow. Cat. It's an evil cat. That's a terrible answer. That's like Pinouche. <laughs> Thank you. You that I just want to say that's my wife and all that. That was a terrible answer. Terrible. Her oh, cat yeah. is evil, dude. Why would you want to be reincarnated into an evil animal? What would you want to be? Man. She picked a specific cat. Can I pick a specific like Yeah? Man, I I want to say something cool. Your cat. Like a like a like a tiger or a le maybe like a bald eagle or an armadillo. No, that's terrible. A liger. <laughs> Dude, those things cool. are fucking Man, big. Man, maybe a bald. If not a bald eagle, then like my dog. If I could, oh well. If I died, I wouldn't be able to reincarnate and be my dog and have me as an owner. Cause man, I have fun with my dog. Your wife's handing you your cup. Thank, thank you, babe. Taylor, say hi. Say hi in front of the camera. Jink. <laughs> she said no. She's such an introvert. That's why she married me to to force her to have a little bit of fun. But yeah, I'd probably be a bald eagle because they're just like, dude, they're- America, that's why. America. Yeah, that's right. No ice, no nothing. Just hot. <laughs> <laughs> you just gonna leave me hanging? Oh, it came out of the fridge. All right, you cool, it's cool. Thank you, babe, I Oof. appreciate you. It's the married life. Get him, <laughs> get him. <laughs> she's gonna give you that. She's gonna give you that look as soon as y'all get in the truck. Bro. I already just got the look. And I'm gonna, gonna be get, able hey, to be there to not, help you out. <laughs> as soon as we're not talking about her and the attention is away from her, I'm gonna be on this podcast getting the look. So y'all oh, just yeah. know I'm gonna be talking to y'all and getting the look from this direction in just a, a minute. It's a death stare. But I think a bald, e bald eagle right there. Is that a bald eagle? Yeah. But you want to grab that bald eagle? All right, she said no. Anyway, they're just gangster, dude. Like, they just fly over everything. And just, like, when, when you see them in a tree, it's like everyone stops to look at it. Know what I'm saying? You know who else can fly? What? Great white sharks jumping out of the ocean. That's so, that's so stupid. Hey. It's already passed. Y'all may not know this about Scott. Scott is weirdly obsessed with sharks. Oh, has been since that. I got him tattooed young. all over me. Have you talked about it on this podcast yet? Not yet. <laughs> But then these people don't know you yet, Scott. Not yet. You need to come a whole entire episode. Like, you oh, need I to can watch see, I can freaking Shark talk Week. about that for fucking shit. I went to school at first for marine biology. It's so, in order to yeah, get failing. in order to get paid a lot of <laughs> That's money. What he had he had all F's. <laughs> he was like, "Dang, I gotta change my major now." No, what they did was they put my uh, instead of marine biology. My major was biomolecular chemistry. Sounds fancy, but what yeah. does that do? That sounds way too fancy. Rocket science is what the fuck it is. Underwater rocket science? <laughs> Pretty much. Like literally? Pretty much. That's what's up. So what happened? Why did you drop out of that? I was doing well in it, actually. I mean, I, science I always tested high in. So you were literally doing rocket science? No, I wasn't doing rocket science. I'd be saying, wouldn't it be funny like if you were- Like biology and all that? What if you were really doing rocket science, and you were like doing bad on the test, and your teacher was like- this ain't rocket science. Well, fuck yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it freaking is. It literally is. <laughs> no, I mean, I looked up the, uh, you know, the pay for whenever you have a marine biology degree. I mean, dude, it's like 40K a year, which ain't, I just, that's too low. And I figured, you know, once I get rich, I can go dive with sharks whenever I want. Yeah. How are you going to get rich, though? What's the, what's the other journey? <laughs> we got quite a few endeavors, you know, of. <laughs> Yeah, we always move in silence. Remember yeah. that. We're gonna, we're gonna yeah, don't sell. speak about it. Yeah, we always move in silence. Keep it to yourself. Don't give your ideas away. They'll steal it, Scott. You know how people. Oh, uh, there's only there's a select few group. There's a select group of guys that know what I plan on doing. A few of them ain't here, but there's two of them in here that do. Real G's move in silence like lasagna. Yeah. Who said that? Lil Wayne. <laughs> Yeah, six foot, seven foot. Okay, I had to think about that. I forgot. Yeah. I was like, lasagna moves in silence? I get you, though. The silent G in lasagna. No, it no, took no, me a yeah, minute, real man. G's. I went to Como. Yeah. Yeah, it took me a minute. That's so clever, man. I, like yeah, the first, that, that's that so clever. Album, he just, hey. I don't know what happened. Until he did uh, the Wayne was nasty. that song, How to Love. Yeah. I hear you. No, he did a rock like, album. He, he did a rock and roll album. Yeah. That's where he lost me. Oh, yeah, that song, yeah, John? After four, kind of like, uh, yeah, John was, I mean, they just went crazy on that album. Ooh, uh, oh, we were talking about this uh, yesterday, me and Ro. 
Like, all right, your top five all time artist. Like any genre? Oh, rap. Top five rap artists rap. of all time. So one is going to be Biggie. Absolutely 100%. Two, I had, uh, crap. I had one Biggie. Two, I had Nas. Nas is so underrated, dude. So underrated. Three, I had Tupac. Four, I had Cube. And five, I was kind of. Dang, so you're like all old school, like nothing from like your generation. Oh, no, no. I mean, if we're talking about new school rappers right now. Not new school, just all time. Oh, I mean, if we're talking about rap nowadays, there's only three real lyricists. That's it. You got J. Cole, Kendrick, and Drake sometimes. Oh, man. You didn't name any of my people, man. Who's your people? And I, let me just tell you. So, like, if I had to name my top five favorite of all time, like, I, of course, I love Tupac and Biggie. Yeah, they're, like, the greatest ever. But, like, I haven't spent my most time listening to them. Just because, like, they they both died, like, the year I was born. Right, yeah, Dude, if I, I was a famous – hey, said. listen, I just want to – if I was a famous rapper and I'd be saying this, I'd get so much crap for this. Like, Lil Yachty said something about this, and they just hammered him. But I – I really like Biggie and Tupac, but they've there's been no mu- new music since I was born. So like I've been, I heard them growing up, and then it just kind of stopped, right? But like the one to add an impact on me, who I listened to the most, was like NBA YoungBoy for sure. Really? Yeah, man. I'm from Louisiana, and look, I don't really listen. I don't do I don't do it much anymore. Kind of straight away and try to listen to better stuff now, like spirit filled stuff. But like definitely YoungBoy, and like. I went, Lil Wayne was one of my favorite ever. Boosie for like sure. Mine are oh, all, Boosie, mine yeah, are all like Louisiana boys. I'm so biased. Like Kevin Gates was up there for a while. Let me tell you. I'm going to tell you something. I, I love my old school rap. I love my rap. There ain't no concert ever in the history of the world that will ever be as good as that Motley Crue concert mom took me to see when I was 12 years old. I remember that. Bruh. I remember you talking about it and going to it. Bruh. What they were playing on that Jumbotron, you should not watch with your mom. <laughs> Tommy Lee's in a revolving drum set, freaking spinning around, and all I could do is watch the Jumbotron because they were playing porn, and I had never seen it before in my life. I'm sitting there looking at him like that. Mom's just sitting there laughing. 12 years old. 12 years old. Motley freaking crew. That's crazy. They were playing. They were, that's what they were playing at the concert? At the Cajun Dome, yeah. Cutting up, man. Oh, bro, it was up. insane. I mean, that that was the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, that's wild. It was awesome, though. <laughs> I bet you loved it. Oh, God, it was awesome, man. It was freaking awesome. No, uh, what were we on? We were talking about rap, but we were moving. Uh, Damn. Scott, you, you get on one little subject, and you just go to it, and we just start talking about it. Oh, dude. We went from, like, religion, relationship mercy when you get to heaven and I don't know how we got to top five rappers but we got to it somehow we we made it here we're a multi-faceted faceted hey it's talent <laughs> man it's just it's not one subject the whole time no it's man. not it's, it's not it's multiple scripted we shit could is talk boring. about baseball right now scripted shit is boring we're not talking we about talk baseball about after what my Cubs did dogs we ain't talking about baseball after the Cubs what they did with that trade get yeah, rid of yeah. Chris Bryant Rizzo Oh no, we ain't your team's about terrible. Baseball. Anyway, we ain't talking about on. baseball. All your teams are terrible, really. Real? Oh yeah, yeah. I got QB one uh, now, son. But uh, well, he's not even starting. He's gonna. That's because your coach is. Te- he likes the Chicago Bears. Louisiana boy, born and raised here, likes the Bears. I should have brought. I was about to put. Dick he likes this the picture USC right here. Trojans. He likes the Chicago Cubs. He likes the Bulls. No, nah, Lakers. Lakers fan. Oh, that's true. And it's hard to go for him with LeBron. Yeah, none of it makes sense, but I love you regardless. Consistent, awesome. though. Consistent. You. Did you see – all right, I think we'll move on from sports. I don't know if that, unless you want to. Did you, do you know – remember Isaiah Thomas? Yeah. Dude, he's like – he's playing in like semi-pro leagues right now, balling out. He scored like 81 points last night. And people are like upset. Dude, he, no NBA team picked him up this year. The game's changed. Isaiah Thomas. So much like the era of the big man. It's completely, completely uh, gone. You know, you have centers shooting threes now. I mean, hell, plus you could have bad breath and they'll call a foul on you. Dude. I'm serious. You, you got bad breath. They'll oh, call it's, a fucking it's foul. It's different. It's not like when 
You watch the last dance with MJ. Them boys used to foul each other. You ever seen uh that Cause. documentary on the Pistons, the bad boys? I taped the entire fucking thing. Oh, I bet you did. I bet you watched it like six times. You probably say it word for word. I've, dude, whenever I come back from a first date with a girl, if she comes back to the house, and we're watching Netflix, watch we're watching the last dance. dance. Yeah. I shit you not. It's only right. I shit you not. How long does she stay? Sometimes you get sidetracked during the documentary. Man, you're, you're, hey, hey, you're an ordained minister. You said it at the beginning of the show. I bless you, my child. Hey, <laughs> you get sidetracked by reading books. Yes, I did. I didn't, hey, I didn't specify. Yeah, I know you did not. I'm, I'm, they, they wanted you to specify. I specify for you. I got you. I don't know man. any of you in explanation. None of them. <laughs> <laughs> but I got a question. So, like, you had said overcoming. Have you asked me about myself earlier? Mm -hmm. Right. What do you see? Like. Me now compared to me before. What's the difference? Your outlook on life. That's the biggest, the biggest difference. What you mean? Like, I mean, you're the way that you were whenever you were on that path. It could be something that was going great for us. Our day could have been going great. But you saw a lot more of the negative in your life at that point than you did any of the positive things happening in it. Right. And it, it could hit you like that. Right. So now you, you're like in that mindset where you wake up. So I was telling you about earlier, that paradigm shift. You wake up happy now because you're happy, you're happy inside. You can act happy. A lot of people can act happy. Oh, a lot of people do act happy. But if you're not happy, truly happy inside. So it's like, a, say you're following the same schedule every day. What do we do? We wake up in the morning. We check our phones. Uh, take a, Some people take a picture of their feet, uh, post it, do whatever. Check their Facebook, they Instagram. post pictures of their feet in the morning? Uh, it's just a reference. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Uh, yeah. You get what I'm saying, though. I hear but yeah, you. they take a picture, a selfie, or all that. They send that. And they follow the same routine. Follow the same routine every day. Now, here's where this changed my thinking completely. So, so you're following that same routine. Now, say you have a thought in your head of something traumatic or something that really, really upset you or pissed you off. And you think about that. Well, you get mad or upset, right? Now, what happens whenever that same thought, you think about it again, and you don't let it bother you? All right? Yeah. Now, what happens is the first time you try to not let that thought bother you, your body gets uncomfortable. Your body's like, all right, wait, wait, wait. So-and-so did this to me. We didn't like that. We should be pissed off. Why are we not worrying about that anymore? Why, whenever we see that person's face, we're not associating them with anger? Yeah. What, what's, what's going on? So your body starts going in, into this uh, place where, oh, no, this is uncomfortable. This is uncomfortable not being pissed yeah. off about it. That is one of the hard, that, that's something that takes a lot of change, and I think that's oh, something. Dude. You, it takes a lot you of have to like brain. retrain your yeah. brain. Retrain, retrain it, and actually you like literally have to retrain on. your brain. It don't even happen overnight. It takes a while. Oh, dude, like, it does. It dude, does. You, you said it. I used to be so negative, negative dude. Yeah. and I had to like get to the point where I was like, man, like I'm a good person. I have a good life. Let me just tell you this: when I was in Teen Challenge, bro, I had been in there like probably nine months. I had no phone. I had no family. You know what I'm saying? I was in Missouri. There's no Cajun food, and people can't cook in Missouri. Shout out to Missouri. Uh, it snowed up there. It was cold, but it wasn't like pretty snow. It was like sloppy, wet, muddy, nasty slow, mm -hmm. snow. Like they called it misery instead of Missouri, right? So with all this going on, and I was in a room the size of a jail cell with two other dudes, and like they just farted all day, dude. <laughs> So I would walk in the other dudes fart all day. We didn't even have a door on our room. We were in a dorm with no door. People just walk in, look in your room. No privacy, no nothing. That was my life. But I was sitting there one day, I was like, dang, like, this is the happiest I've ever been in my life. I'm not worried about, like, I know I'm loved. I know I'm a good person. I hit, that was when it hit me. That, that was the moment it hit me. I was like, I have found what I've always been looking for. And you probably cleared out that room yourself. A few times. I don't want to talk about that on the podcast, but 
the food they it's like expired food it's donated it's a rough time scott it's a rough rough time but like realizing that i had nothing i didn't have a truck i didn't have a wife i didn't have a house but i was happier than i've ever been in my entire life that's what i want to that's what i want to hear i want to hear the full story the full story here oh boy. I, i've heard it i've heard it a few times but i want to hear the full story over again my wife yeah about how, how y'all came about the first time y'all met can you put a picture of her on the video or anything so they could see? Cause she I might be able to put a, one of the wedding pictures up. On. Man, we got to do something. Like, y'all, I have a Oh, I can. I have I a hot actually, wife. Hey, you know what? I can do that. I can put a picture she, of her. Uh, she's even hot without makeup. Beautiful That's a, girl. That's a big deal. Right Very now, she don't have makeup, so she don't want to get in front of the camera. It's like, dude, she's still pretty. You'd be able to see. Anyway, anyway. So, like, it's the craziest thing. Man, Sub 30, that place I was telling you about where they invited me to the Mardi Gras parades. By the way, that night is where I met, like, all the people that were at my birthday surprise party, like that whole group of people I met that night, like they all like they they just stay in my life, like they're all you know what I'm saying. Anyway, um, so sub thirty has started again after COVID, and Joseph, he's the uh he's a youth pastor at the Lafayette campus. Pastor Jacob's son I was like, hey, can you serve tonight? Can you get here a little early and help out? And I was like, yeah. So I get there. And uh, like I said, it's it's for college age people. It's a college age ministry. You don't have to be in college, like none of that, just college aged. Well, I get there and I wanted to be like a door greeter. I wanted to tell the people, hey, when they came in. I wanted to say, hey, welcome to Sub 30. And just like, I don't know. And like Joseph was like, nah, I need you to drive golf carts. And I was like, dude, dude, it was like, it was hotter, it was cold or something, I don't remember, but like, People would park at the church, and then we would do it at the house behind the church. And so we would just, like, valet people the whole time. And I'm like, dude, I don't want to do that. I, he's my buddy, so I tell him stuff like that. And he was like, he's like, man, you're going to meet your wife on that golf cart tonight. He said it just like that. And I remember laughing. I was like, whatever, dude. And so I'm doing it, and, uh, and I pull into the parking lot, and I see this blonde, and she's like, Dude, she's looking bad. I'm like, golly, that girl is pretty. And she like You silver tongue devil, you. Hey, you know how I do, Scott. I could like her car was like beeping and she couldn't figure out why it was. She was like, I don't know why my car. She was just she was in panic mode, Scott. Her car was beeping. She didn't know why the heck it was beeping. She was like walking back and forth. Well, she like gets on the golf cart and I'm like, I get a better look at her. I'm like, golly, this chick is bad. And I'm like, look. So I, I like started talking. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, how you doing? I'm Colin. She's like, hey, nice to meet you. I wanted to be like, oh no, no, this is what it was. I said, I said, hey, what's your name? She said, Taylor. I wanted to be like, well, ask me my name. Like, I have a name too. Like, ask me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm driving you from the parking lot to sub 30. Were you shy? Is that why you didn't ask? Yeah, she's the biggest intro. Dude, I literally had the thought, I'm like, listen, I, I like. So she's either extremely shy or she just straight up don't want to talk to me. There's no other option. She's shy or she just ain't got no interest in talking to me. And so, like, I drop her off. We did not have much of a conversation at all. And, like, I went in the sub 30 and, like, dude, like, they're playing the worship music. And I seen this girl looking so beautiful and she just had her eyes closed and she had her hands like this and I just saw her like worshiping and I was like dang like that girl loves God and like I always wanted I always was picky and knew I wasn't gonna settle to I found like a pretty girl who just loved God because you know if you find a girl who loves God with all of her heart you can trust that girl she has some kind of good morals somewhere in there you know what I'm saying she does something right and so I'm like alright I'm talking to that girl. She's either going to, we're either going to go on a date or she's going to reject me. <laughs> shoot your shot, kill her. Something's going to happen. Shoot or shoot. That's right. This shooter was going to shoot. It That's is right. what it is. And dude, like right when I said, I asked my buddy, Hunter Boyer, you know Hunter. I said, hey, what's her name? And he said, he told me who she was and showed me her Instagram. I'm like, so she's single? And he's like, yeah. Dude, not even like a minute later, another dude I know come up to me and he's like, bro, there's a girl here. She's so beautiful, and she makes me want to be a better man. I was like, who? And he's like, Taylor Lonclose, and he pointed at her. And I'm just like, I remember thinking, 
come on, bro. Like, I, I said that. I didn't think it. I, I remember saying, like, come on, bro. Like, I was going to talk to that girl. And he's like, man, like, I think I want to. Whatever. So I kind of thought about her a few times during the week. And the dude who said that was not the dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just know mm-hmm. it's not. he's not the one. Like, not it's not. The they're not he's in not the same the league. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. so, like, we go eat that week. I'm like, bro, you going to hit that girl up? And he's like. Nah, man, I'm not going to do it. I don't think I'm ready. Like, all this. I said, well, I, well, I will. And he was like, just just don't DM her on, on Instagram. You need to you need to wait till you see her at sub 30 next month. You need to see her a few times and then ask her for coffee. I was like, bro, that's in like a month, and I don't know if she's going to go. Like, I'm DMing her. And, dude, I DMed her, and I was like, I was like, hey, didn't you ride on my golf cart at sub 30? And she was like, yeah, or something. I don't know. And I said, you know, you know I am, Scott. You know I'm man, smooth. I man. said, uh, I said, well, am I the best golf cart driver you ever had? And I just started like flirting. I just knew there was something about her, and and I could tell by what she was saying back that she was interested, very interested. So we uh, she put she put a little too many emojis. At the man, show. she was putting kissy faces oh. in there. <laughs> Don't make that face. There was some how, emojis how, in hey, there, girl. How many emojis did you put? How how many emojis? Taylor, did you I will put? put. I will send him screenshots and we will put it on this podcast. How many emo- How many emojis did you put after each text? How many? Maybe one. Yeah, that was you in, put hey, one after each text. Hey, dude. you know when there's emojis. Whenever there's an emoji. Hey, fellas, it, and it just I just want to let y'all know if there if she's putting emojis, she's into after you. each text. If she's putting an emoji, she's into you, bro. If she puts an emoji on three texts in a row, she's into you. Stop questioning it. Go for it. Shoot a shoot. Anyway, uh. I asked her, I was like, we should get coffee sometime. This was on a Friday. And she's like, yeah, how about Sunday? I'm like, oh, in two days? I was like, she's feeling me. She's feeling me. And we went to CC's, dude, and we just both knew. Like, literally, we sat down and we started talking. And, like, I know, I, I just remember thinking, I'm like, all right, if this is who she really is, and one one thing I know about the people at Sub 30 and the people people who like are in the same circle as me is like they, they don't change who they are. They you pretty much know who they are the first time you meet them. I'm like, if this is who she really is, like I want to marry this chick. She she has a great spirit. Like she's kind of quiet, which is what I need because I talk so much. You know what I'm saying? Like just everything. She's gorgeous. She loves the Lord. Like all this stuff. And bro, like w- within. The first day we both knew, like, if this, is, if this is who we really are, that's it. And it just, it never stopped. It never died down. It never got old. And, like, we had been dating a few months. And she was like, hey, I just want to show you something. And, like, somebody had texted her during our first date and was like, how is it? I had went to the bathroom. And she texted back. She said, great, I'm going to marry this dude. Oh, that's how smooth I am, Scott. Is that how smooth I am? <laughs> you silver tongue devil. Because, <laughs> I mean, dude, no, honesty, um. Uh, the first time I met her, whenever y'all came, it's like I almost pretty much knew her, like the my, my entire life. Whenever y'all both walked in there, yeah. What was that at uh, Bure? Yeah, Bure. Yeah, yeah. And she yeah. said the same thing. Whenever we we walked out, I well, mean, you're that kind of dude. Like me and you, like you've been my best friend for so long, bro. And you're like really, like easy to be around and comfortable to be uh, around. So you like, you sweet talking, huh? You sweet talking. Hey, you, you know I'm smooth with this guy. Uh, I sweet talk on, everybody man. in here. Now, nah, but like you, you really are, dude, and like. She's like that too. She's really shy, but if it's like a small number of people, if it's like just me, you, and her, which it was, like you really get to see who she is. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's cool. Now I'm a married man. Because y'all dated, y'all dated for six months before you popped the question, right? Or was it no, three, three? Less than that. Three, yeah, yeah three. Hey, it three didn't take me long. Crap. <laughs> I was in there. I, was, I wanted to say like four, but then I was like, oh, he did, was hey, I paying attention? And, yeah. Look, a lot of those, a, a lot of times when people propose that early, that's usually yeah, when you know, you know. Oh, dude, when you know, you know. Because, like, there was no doubt in any area. If there's, like, let me just tell you why. If you know exactly what you're looking for and you don't settle no matter what, like, if you have, like, if you have, like, non negotiables. Like, I had non-negotiables. Like, first of all, you have to be attracted to the person you're marrying. Absolutely, 100%. If you, if you say looks don't matter, that's stupid. 
You wanna know how you, you wanna know how you counter that? If you're ever sitting there talking to talking to a girl at the bar, I tell my buddies I say, all right. If she say looks don't, if she says that looks don't matter, point out a guy in that bar and say, what about that guy? Guarantee about seventy five percent they say, oh, that's not my type. Yeah, so true. Because the looks matter. I, I talked about that actually on the podcast the other day. Whenever I talked about dating and relationships, I said, "Look, here's my theory. I have a list of the five qualities I absolutely have to have in somebody I'm a date or marry, and the five qualities that I absolutely couldn't date somebody if they embodied them." Now, after you write down those five qualities, you have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, "Do I embody?" The same qualities that I'm looking for. Yeah. Do you bring? Do you the bring the same, same thing, thing to the table? You have to like. Because if have you don't do that, if you don't, you're not gonna you're not gonna find that person. Because if you think about it, like, so I thought about that. I was like, okay, so I want my non-negotiable. She got to be beautiful, but like, she has to love God like more than me. Like, have a relationship with God. Like, be just be in it. Be a great person. Be like driven. Like, not be lazy. Like, not just sit. Like, just doing something. You know what I'm saying? Something something more and just like have a purpose in our spirits like really connect and her not be as talkative and annoying as me you know what i'm saying like the, i had to, had to be like kind of an introvert oh you definitely found that she hit every <laughs> nail on the head perfectly but like when i was thinking about it i was like okay so a girl who's like that if, if there's a girl because you start to question if they exist sometimes you know what i'm saying when you're single and you want that and you're like but if there's a I would always be like, am I really going to find exactly what I'm looking for? Anyway, I'd be like, if there's a girl like that, and when I find it, what is she going to want? If, if she's doing that, so, that I, so let me just put Taylor for an example. She graduated college with honors, right? She's a third grade teacher, full-time third grade teacher, right? She takes care of the house very well, keeps it very clean. You know what I'm saying? She does great at her job. She goes above and beyond. She she never misses church. She reads the Bible. She prays. She serves high school students. She goes to student nights. Like does all these like great things. If a girl's doing all that, what the what kind of man does that girl want? That girl does probably not want a lazy man who doesn't do very much and doesn't take care of himself and doesn't do good. Like that, you feel me? Hold on, a kicker. Can you hand me that uh? The charger for the phone. I don't want the GoPro to go out. The GoPro's dying. No, no, the my phone. That's an emergency. Yeah, it's an emergency. No, I mean, dude. See, I, I've had to come to. Thank you, sir. See, I've come to terms of realization in terms of my uh, dating experiences. You know, number one thing I had to learn was the same. The same the nineteen uh, eighties anymore. So I can't ask a girl on a date and set a definite date a week in advance and not text her the rest of the week. Yeah, you can't do that, Scott. <laughs> no. Yep, yep, you got to change I, that. I, I talked to Kicker, Nick, and all of them. Because Nick was like, so uh, your date's still on tomorrow night, right? I said, yeah. He said, did you text this one? I said, no, dude, I set the date. I said, I'll be there because I'm a man of my word. Well, Nick and Victoria said, I wouldn't show up. <laughs> and I told Karen, the same, my same scenario. She goes, I wouldn't show up either. I said, Mom, what you mean? She yeah, goes, you got Y'all have way up. too many ways to communicate with each other nowadays for you not to text me all week. I said, all right, all right. So the one thing I learned about myself for sure is that I definitely could work on my communication skills, especially in a relationship. I mean, yeah, given I have been in some different scenarios with relationships that a lot of people probably shouldn't be in. But also, I didn't true. realize that I do like being by myself, and I am very picky. So when it comes down to me choosing somebody, for me to ask you that question to get it, to be exclusive, you really have to prove to me that my time that I enjoy so much, my, I value every single minute of my day. It's the most important thing you got is time. I value myself a lot. And I value every single minute of my day. Either I'm planning something for this, I'm doing my stocks, I'm doing something, man. That's what I'm doing. I like to be productive. If you're going to take those things away for a certain aspect, we have to have to be on the same mission. We have to be goal. Girl that I'm dating has to be goal-oriented. 100%. Goal-oriented, you have to have a 
positive outlook on life. So I'll tell you my top five qualities. All right. Tell me, Scott. You have to be a Republican woman. Tell me, Scott. You have to be a Republican woman. Tell me. Optimistic. Yeah. Christian. Yeah. Tell me, Scott. Good hygiene. Tell me. Good hygiene. My boy. And have a good relationship with your family and friends. This man knows what he wants. This is a man who knows what he wants. Serious. That's how it goes. I hear you. A good, hey, and let me reiterate, good hygiene. Yeah. If you ain't washing yourself, Scott ain't the one for you. No. It's no. not going to happen. Three showers a day, partner. Three showers a day, barbershop once a week. Yeah. Nice. Got to stay fresh, man. Oh, yeah, bro. Oh, yeah. It's a big deal. Taylor, you might want to go in uh, that one over there. Man, like, there was a guy. To the left. To the left, to the left. To the right, to the right. Who's that? Who's saying that? Rihanna? Beyonce. Beyonce, Beyonce. Man, like, you write about the hygiene thing. There's a guy in the gym. He's my friend, man, but he stinks. (laughs) And, like, we were doing the Stairmaster, and I was right next to him, and, like, dude, I couldn't even, like, focus because he smelled so bad. And, like, I can't help, but when I see him, my brain instantly goes there. I never want to be that man. I never want to be the man when somebody sees me and be like, that boy stinks. You know what I'm saying? And I can't even understand, like, man, I might step on people's toes because there's a lot of people who don't, like, shower and bathe every day. But I don't even understand how that can happen. I, dude, I can't go to sleep. How you can't, like, feel, like, the grease on your skin and your whole funky hair and your old funky butt crack. Like, <laughs> go wash your funky <laughs> butt crack, dude. <laughs> your mama raised you better than that, ball. Dude. Just because you're from Koto, <laughs> are you from Grand Prairie? Even if you're from Delcom and Erath. Back it up a little bit. Even if you're from Erath, South Erath. Even if you eat That's shrimp. That's Henry. South Erath is Henry. Even if you're from Abbeville, you need to wash that butt crack every day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome back to you have no, even Hey, listen. Even if you was born and raised in Maurice or in Canton or in Scott or Karen Crow, you still need to wash that butt every day with your little funky self. <laughs> hey, we clean right. in Youngsville, baby. That was just a PSA. Hey, notice I didn't say Youngsville or Broussard. Dude, I didn't I, even say I, I have I have noticed that. Like we we are very it's so very, bougie now. We, hey, we keep up with our hygiene. Do you remember like when we were young? This was a like a bunch of cane fields in a farm town. Oh yeah, like the back of Youngsville. Like, I remember Ambassador used to stop at Vera. Now Youngsville's bougie. And, like, me and her live in Broussard in these, like, brand-new apartments. And there's, like, a new Walmart and Home Depot and Canes. And y'all don't come to them apartment. We're, we're in room 3210. Kicker's probably going to try to get me to go to Corner Bar. <laughs> I think you want to go. No, 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 no. You no, no. try to get him He's to go. <laughs> I'm not going to Corner I'm not going to Corner Bar. <laughs> I'm not going to corner ball. He said kickers are just no kicker. No, no kicker. kicker. Right, kicker. No, Let's no, go. no. Let's kicker go. goes. You, know, you ain't say one. Wait, let me go to the bathroom real quick. <laughs> no, you didn't say dude. one word the whole time. Kicker Scott's goes. Like, no, kicker no kicker. calls me and he says, uh, he's like, uh, Scott, right, I'm going to come go. pick you up. I'm going to come pick you up and then we're just going to go for one beer, one drink, kicker. kicker. We always do. I mean, big drink. <laughs> <laughs> just one drink, just one big gallon of whiskey. One big gallon of whiskey. <laughs> you laugh, but let me tell you something. That's the old school cure to your sinuses and allergies. Man, that's why you ain't got no sinuses, you. I, sh- I should you not. That's why I'm so healthy. I should yeah. you not. I, if, I'm ever, if I ever have a sinus infection or I get sick with allergies, I make a hot toddy. That knocks that shit out. Knocks that shit out real quick. Save me a doctor bill. Good to go. No, I'm not good to go. I'm out like a light. That's that South Louisiana medicine like right some, there. Like sleep tea in it with some honey. Yeah, I hear you. But usually my, my hot toddy that I make is just whiskey. So I'll be sleeping <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> Nothing else. Straight <laughs> whiskey. <laughs> keep, the bottle, keep the bottle right next to my bed. You talking about all that honey and stuff. It sounded good. He's like, mine straight whiskey. Like, yeah, my, that's my there. recipe. I, he's, I ain't going to lie to y'all. I just put straight whiskey. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's funny as hell. 
Hell. Well, this has been a fun one. It was, man. This is fun. It was a good one. Folks, I'm before we close this thing out, if you liked what you saw today, please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. We will be coming up with way more content. Kylan's definitely going to be back. Coming back. Definitely going to be back for another episode. Probably a few episodes. And we'll try to get Taylor on here for one. I'm going to get my wife on here. Very introverted and shy. And y'all know Kicker's always going to be here. Kicker, Kicker, we might as well promote you to the like production manager now. Yeah, give Kicker a promotion. What does that mean for God? It's a better title. It sounds good. It sounds, yeah, it sounds fancy. I, I, what, what dude. Would I be doing different? Not a damn thing. Okay. Dude, my title at work <laughs> went from production manager to plant manager to operations manager to senior director of operations, and my job never changed <laughs> at all. Just like every time, they would just give me a raise and change my title, and I, my job never change not once not i literally like do i have a little bit more responsibility so i guess you could say it kind of did but from like from plant manager to operations manager to senior director of operations nothing changed our operation just got bigger and i make more money but like i still do the same thing i don't see anything wrong with that <laughs> there's nothing at all wrong with it not one thing literally not one thing but it's cool hey the title hey it sounds good. He's he's like, yeah, this is my senior director of operations. It's like, it make better. him sound like a boss. It does. It does sound I, I mean, I would love to say that. Nice little ring. A nice little ring to it. It has a great ring to it. It's like, it's and like he ain't lying. Like, he's up, serious. Scott Davis, damn good to meet you. Kyle LeBlanc, senior director of operations. <laughs> yeah. And nice to meet you. I'm Kyle LeBlanc. I'm the, the senior director of operations. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's right. Makes me feel good about it. That's right. Yeah. Hell. Well, I... I'm the co I'm the CEO of the SDIBF, the Scott Davis International Booze Fund. <laughs> Wait, and you're the founder of this show? Indeed, man. I'm just gonna, multifaceted. Are you going to put a link down below to where people can donate to um, your foundation? No, no. The foundation's taken care of. Okay. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, the foundation's all good. <laughs> he don't need help. <laughs> you can like and subscribe, though. That would be a donation. <laughs> no, that's crazy. That's crazy, man. The... Thank y'all. Y'all have been viewing this. I mean, it's crazy how fast this thing's grown in just a month. In just a month. So we're going to go up from here. And uh, YouTube did delete one of the videos. So we have no more. Uh, what was no that video room. about? If I was get. It about like politics or like the yeah, vaccine Yeah, if or I get. Uh, there's no more warnings. If I get three more strikes, they boot me off. So that being said, I will be on Spotify. The people who don't take you off. So you'll be able to see that COVID video posted. And Good. Uh, it's going to be uh, very nice. It's very nice. Good. So, yeah, that's that. You got anything else you want to tell them, brother? Oh, we need Man. to put that link for the... Uh, for Adult and Teen Challenge. Yeah. We need adult to put and down. Teen Challenge. If you Go, listen, go on Google and type in Adult and Teen Challenge Mid-America. It's in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Give them a call. If your people are struggling, tell your people about them. Send your people out there. Your people are going to be all right. And if it's, a, it's a all men's. If there's women's, just type in women's teen challenge. And it, it doesn't literally mean teen challenge. You could be an adult, whatever. It's called adult and teen challenge. So You can always message our YouTube channel, too, because, look, y'all, I'm always on that thing. You ever feel like you're going through some message the Facebook, message the uh, YouTube page? Always answer, man. But people go through a lot of shit in their lives. We here for uh, you. You know, we've been, we've certainly been through a lot of shit in ours. So we kind of know, you know, everybody has their own store. We're always here to help. We'll drop that link below. And then, like I said, Colin's going to be back. No, I'm not going to give you where he lives. We're not putting his phone number. <laughs> yeah, hey, thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> but message the uh, YouTube page if you ever want to get in touch with Kylan. And we'll probably uh, be able to contact him through email. And not his private number, but contact him through email. And he's always willing to help somebody. So, always. So you want to give him a, uh, tell him a goodbye from Unwoken? Man, thank you all for watching that Unwoken. Y'all come back and watch again. And make sure you're washing your funky butt crack. That's right. Wash your funky butt crack. Wash that, ball. If you want you a woman, wash that butt crack. Especially if you live in Abbeville. Say, ball.
<laughs> we'll see y'all next week.